Harry was hired in October of 2011, and prior to his appointment, he worked in the governmental sector in New Mexico for over 17 years, including positions as city administrator in Carl Fev, uh, county, county manager for Grant County, and administrative services director for Eddy County. Uh, this is my favorite part about Harry. He holds a bachelor's degree in industrial relations, a master's degree in fire and emergency management administration, a master of business administration degree, and a doctoral degree in economic development. <laughs> That's pretty good for a county manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's Harry. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Thank you for all being here uh, this morning. Nancy doesn't know it, but um, I was kind of tentative about whether or not I'd be able to make it this morning. I had an event last night, uh, just needed three more white balls. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite happen, so uh, I guess that's why y'all are all here today, too. Um, we're here today, it's been advertised as a state of the county uh, address, and uh, given everything that's happened this week and the federal perspective, I know that makes sense. I wanted to differentiate it, what I'm going to be talking about today a little bit from what you might have heard two nights ago. And uh, the first is, I focused the, um, this, the conversation more on what's been going on in the past year. We put out an annual report, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, the second major difference is, rather than um, half the room, at the end of each slide, I want everybody to stand up and clap. So <laughs> no, not one or the other, just we can all do that together. Um, we, we've just published our annual report, and uh, as the, the name states, you know, we do this every uh, year. Uh, it, at this time of year, just to report on what activities we've uh, undergone during the last uh, 12 months. We used to have this nice printed version, but today we're putting it all online, and it's actually nicer that way because there's some hot links to get you some different information. But if you are interested in looking at our annual report, it's links off of our homepage. Uh, one of the banner ads right now, especially since we've just published it, uh, shows that, showcases that you can go uh, right to the annual report itself, and a lot of the information today uh, is drawn directly from that report. It is focused, our report, on three specific areas, and these areas align with our council's strategic goals. And so they are, as stated here, economic vitality, quality of life, and quality governance. And uh, this, on the 23rd of this month, every year the council goes through a process of establishing these strategic goals that then our staff try to uh, implement over the course of the year. Uh, we're gonna have a, a discussion about those strategic goals, not this Saturday, but a week from then, uh, as we try to update them for the, the next 12 month period. So I'm gonna go through, uh, based on those focus areas, uh, we also have some subheadings and uh, I'm gonna highlight some specific priorities. You will see that there are other priorities when you review our plan. I'm not gonna go into um, trying to reiterate all those today, just wanna get some information out there. And if there's any questions, please do ask. Um, I'm, I'm happy to try to address those. Uh, for economic vitality, uh, the council established four primary foci for this last year. One of them was under economic vitality and it was to maximize our opportunities with respect to the new Manhattan Project National Historical Park. And uh, here you have a picture you can see back in November on the 11th, we had the grand opening of a visitor center, uh, which was right after the uh, signing ceremony that occurred in Washington on the 10th. And uh, our chair of the council for this past year, Kristen Henderson, is holding up one of the documents that were signed by uh, Secretaries Jewell and Moniz, thank you, <laughs> I saw him Anybody see him in the, the State of the Union right behind? Um, it was neat for us to get that actual um, document and bring it with us. Um, the, the visitor center, if you're not aware, is located in our community building in the former space uh, that was occupied by the Forest Service. And we, we've had a great partnership in this, uh, specifically with our historical society, because uh, we have are re in the process of remodeling the museum uh, on the side of Fuller Lodge and just so turned out that uh, they needed space to, to move some of the exhibits, had some personnel, were under contract for um, some services with the Historical Society and it just worked out to have this new space and I really appreciate the partnership with Heather and, and her staff um, because that coming together has allowed us to 
operate a visitor center in the lapse, uh, in the absence, excuse me, of any federal funding. We have a park, but we don't have a budget for the park. And so it's become um, a local driven project, at least until the federal government uh, assigns some monies, hires a superintendent, and uh, hopefully comes in and, and puts in some of their own facilities. But until then, we've been working. Uh, many of you are probably aware of some committees that have been formed. Several of you are on that committee. Uh, trying to support the activities and the development of this park. Uh, it is a three location park with our, our friends in Oak Ridge and in Richland. Uh, so it's a unique park, but uh, should be a, a good driver for tourism economy here as we go forward. Uh, certainly with the confluence of that, uh, I'll take a step back here, but uh, in the, the preparations for the grand opening, we had hosted several meetings uh, here with Park Service personnel, with our partners from the other communities, uh, trying to develop and support the um, memorandum of agreement that was signed between the Park Service and the Department of Energy. And running up to that uh, with the Science Fest event, there were some uh, festivities associated with that. We had a local, I believe it's high school uh, artist assist with the uh, painting. And you may not recognize it, but on the right is our depiction for Science Fest of the former main gate. You can see the historical photo there, and we got pretty close, I think. It was a neat, neat effort. Behind that facade is a, the restroom facility down at the, the East Park, and so it was a great sprucing up of that um, area. And I don't know the gentleman's name, I'm sure several of you do here, but brought out his period-specific uh, vehicle. People were getting pictures out front. It was a, a neat experience there for many that came up to the Science Fest. And we've left that up. Uh, just to, to attract interest as others are driving into town. Oh, back to what I was going to say though, um, with the, the Manhattan Project Park, as well as uh, in October, Secretary Jewell came out and uh, dedicated the Bayou Caldera National Preserve, a new Park Service unit. It was under Forest Service management prior to that time. And obviously with our Bandelier National Monument, uh, all three of these Park Service units here uh, within or directly adjacent to Los Alamos County should be a great draw. And we're trying to capitalize upon that um, tourism prospect as we move forward because each of these have their own uh, bandolier. I think it's February 11th, is going to celebrate its 100th anniversary. And, not, and the Park Service 100th anniversary happens to be this year as well. So there's a lot of new activities with the new parks, with the anniversaries both of the Park Service and this particular unit uh, that should bode well as we try to attract people to come to our community, uh, diversify our economy through some increased uh, tourism draw and uh, looks really good as, as we're going forward because I can't think of any other place that within 10 minutes you can be at three different National Park Service units except for maybe on the mall in DC. Uh, it, it's, it's fairly unique. This will make a few of you smile. <laughs> We, as many of you know, we've been through a process, a uh, very public process of trying to develop uh, a marketing message, a slogan, a logo, everything uh, associated with that, so that we could take our message to the, the country and try to attract people to the, the community. We went through a number of iterations. Uh, this marketing, again, under economic vitality is a focus of ours to try to enhance our local economy. And we have to have a name and a presence and a, a recognizable one as well. Uh, so just recently the council adopted this as our logo, uh, as well as our strap line. And forgive me for all these terms, you don't really need to know other than this is the, uh, the bottom right hand corner of any ad we put out essentially. Uh, something that will hopefully attract people, they'll recognize it as they see multiple ads out in the, the um, media. And associated with that was the tagline where discoveries are made, which was a point of debate. But for me personally, I'm very happy that we have come to conclusion on this subject because now we can actually put it into, into our efforts. Um, it is kind of neat, and this is one iteration. And forgive me because this is a somewhat draft. We're still looking at finalizing the colors, the, the um, mark itself. And so as you'll see the next slide, there's some background to it that needs to be cleaned up. But we're uh, working with Atlas Advertising to enhance this mark and hope to use it either in this format 
or in another format that they created, uh, which is a combination of those two uh, pictures you saw within Los Alamos. I kind of like, I'm, I kind of prefer this one. It, it shows a little bit of both. Uh, but we'll be using one or the other as we do some of our marketing moving forward. Hope to roll it out for uh, collaborative efforts with the New Mexico True program, with LACDC, and any others who are doing marketing uh, in the area. We did. Another, again, we're on economic vitality here, so uh, part of that was attracting, uh, reinstating our air service during the past year. Uh, that was something that we had to cancel, I believe it was January of last year and we went through a process of trying to recruit a new uh, carrier to the area. We have partnered um, with the new carrier, Boutique Air, and you can see their plane in the background. If you flew the, uh, the former planes and flew this one, you'll see a, a distinct difference in some of the quality features. Uh, it's a pressurized cabin as opposed to the, the former, which was not. Uh, I don't think you can see quite as well because the, the wings are lower than they were before, but uh, still, if you haven't taken the 20 minute flight to Albuquerque, I encourage you to do so. It flies over some of the most beautiful terrain between here and Albuquerque. Uh, and it's just amazing, especially after a long trip. Uh, I personally like coming back, getting on that plane, getting back here, as opposed to facing another two hours of driving after having been in a plane for all day, in some cases, coming back from various points. So uh, we're trying to support this air service, it will only continue with uh, use, basically, but uh, the benefit being that many companies looking to relocate in this area, uh, they fly into Albuquerque and then face a two-hour drive here, they start to think that we're a little remote and uh, inaccessible, and being able to have uh, the, the staff, the CEO, whomever of any company looking at uh, doing business here or relocating here, to be able to fly right into our, our local airport, grab a a rental car, hop on the bus, whatever, uh, full ability to get where they need to be uh, without having to endure that, that additional drive. Now this is a different season than we're in presently, <coughs> but uh, one of the other economic vitality efforts lately has been a partnership with uh, our Los Alamos Ski Club. Uh, I will use a common name, Sipapu Group, but uh, they're actually organized as Pajarito Mountain, Pajarito Recreation. Uh, here locally and the county to try to continue uh, the efforts at the, the ski hill. As you may know, the, the ski club itself was facing some financial troubles, especially given that it, the weather. Uh, they're entirely dependent upon snow to uh, operate without having the ability to, to make snow. And so we looked at a partnership with the ski club uh, where they're transferring property both to the county as well as to this private uh, Pajarito Recreation Group so that the county will operate somewhat like the Forest Service does in other areas as the landowner for much of the, the property, but the Sipapu Group, Pajarito Rec, uh, will be operating and is currently operating the, the ski hill. And uh, we've, we've been blessed with the, the snow this year. I was just talking to some folks and seeing many people uh, up at the ski hill, many day passes sold. I, I know they're pretty happy with the uh, response that they've gotten this year and the fact that they were able to be open during the holiday season. But we're looking at other initiatives, this obviously being a draw to the area, enhancing some of our tourism opportunities, as well as um, entrenching our uh, ability to be an outdoor recreational community. There's other efforts here. You can see the, the folks in this picture are up there on a, a bike, and, um, bike and hike day, as it were. And we're looking at further efforts to collaborate with the Pajarito Recreation Group to put in potentially uh, some mountain biking trails, encourage them to invest in that, as well as there's a discussion with council right now about uh, incentivizing such development, just so we have year-round activities up at the mountain. These gentlemen are from Attack Research. Uh, you may or may not have heard of this business. It's located down in White Rock. And part of our efforts with economic vitality is not only to attract new businesses to the area, but to retain those that are here uh, this particular business is somewhat homegrown, a lot of locals uh, involved in it, and they want to live and work here. However, they, uh, most of their business is conducted outside of the state, not just outside of the, the county, but outside of the state. And th these types of tech spinoffs from the lab, they do a lot of uh, computer-related storage as well as, um, I think the name implies, defense-related, um, cyber-related, cyber attack uh, issues. They want to locate here because of the quality of life things that are going on. And this was expressed in a media article uh, 
as well. They would like to be here. However, uh, they don't conduct business locally. And so it's that type of business where we can somewhat attract, retain folks who are working um, on issues. With, there's a, a wide um, breadth of information with respect to technological issues here. And we want to capture some of that, and not lose it to other communities as we have in the past. A similar uh, effort that the county's undertaken recently has been with respect to our smart house. Uh, this, this facility was built uh, as part of a collaborative partnership with the Japanese government to look at uh, smart grid issues. They were here for two years. At the end of that project, they turned over all of the infrastructure that they donated, including the uh, photovoltaic system you see on our landfill, our former landfill. A significant amount, about $30 million worth of investment that the Japanese government made here in Los Alamos. Part of that was uh, the county's contribution was building the smart house. And since that project's over, we've now, uh, we're in the process of turning that building that was designed as a house to demonstrate certain smart grid activities. But by removing some walls, taking out bathtubs and other th types of um, accoutrements in that house, it's now becoming more like an office space. And we have leased that space to uh, Descartes Labs, who similarly were a spinoff from the lab. Local folks wanted to live, work here. Uh, they were being recruited by Santa Fe quite heavily. Uh, to move down there, and we really tried to retain them uh, because their growth pattern is, has been really big. I think so far, Descartes has gotten three rounds of venture capital funding, and they're, they're on a trajectory that, that looks like a great expansion, Some, something we want to grow here locally, as opposed to relying solely on. And we, we certainly appreciate all the lab, and everything, the lab and everything it does for the community, but in trying to diversify our economic base, uh, we're looking at both uh, attracting and then, in these cases, retaining businesses locally. Additional part of that effort, uh, 20th, excuse me, Trinity is running east to west up here. Um, and then 20th Street runs in front of the teen center uh, between Ruby K's and the teen center, as you know. If you look at uh, where it intersects with Trinity, on the other side of the the road on the south side was, was some county-owned property. We actually had some portable buildings out there for a while as we were undergoing our own administrative building construction. But uh, Greg Fisher, our Economic Vitality Administrator, worked closely with CenturyLink, and you're probably familiar with that building, to consider the sale, I believe it was about a 1.3 acre sale, of carving off from their land uh, some property. And it, it's essentially this corridor here and here which we're looking at uh, extending 20th Street to the south side of Trinity. That allows us the opportunity to seek out some potential signalization at that intersection. And with the teen center going in uh, near Ashley Pond, with the school administration on the other side of the street, we also have some other user, um, rentors in that facility where school administration is that re had requested a, an ability to cross Trinity <coughs> Drive. Anybody ever played Frogger? <laughs> it's kind of like that for, the, for uh, many trying to get across Trinity Drive these days. And so this may allow us to, that's all dependent on state um, agreement because it is a state highway. Trinity happens to be a state highway. But we're looking at access across the street. And then as well, as you can see, and I know it's kind of hard to see from where you're sitting, we've carved out about six lots, all county owned land that we're looking uh, to once uh, finally subdivided market that land to begin the development of some sort of tech park down in the same area, centered upon the fact we have the smart house here and currently have Descartes Labs in there. So this is another effort trying to open up that south side of Trinity for further development, get some new businesses in here, provide some pad ready sites so that anybody who wishes to relocate here, we already have it subdivided, access is, is available, and then uh, hopefully we can create a little uh, confluence of various businesses there that will grow uh, for some other opportunities on the south side of Trinity. Next section, quality of life, and I think we're doing okay. Uh, we had a sub goal of promoting the maintenance and enhancements of housing stock, everybody's for that, right? Uh, while utilizing infill opportunities as well. Uh, infill for the, the county is important. Uh, after the fire, if you look around, there's many vacant lots that have not been uh, had any reconstruction on. 
And if a developer comes in and builds on there, it's very good for the community. One, because it's utilizing available infrastructure. We don't have to go back and uh, bring water, gas, sewer to any particular lot. It's already ready for development. And uh, we've had, I believe it was five new housing starts on those types of properties within the past year. Five new houses isn't great in some communities, but here, based on our, our past history, it's a, a great increase in some of the activity levels that we've had lately. So I think that's a good sign that people are investing, putting new housing in. Uh, on another housing front, uh, we've also initiated an opportunity to develop land down in White Rock. And that is on the A19 property. And if any of you are familiar with that, uh, you know where the fire station is and the new visitor center. If you continue going west from the visitor center, there's approximately 60 acres between the visitor center and Pajarito Road. And that land is uh, currently under conversation. We have actually signed a development agreement and purchase agreement with a company out of uh, Albuquerque with a lot of history in both land and housing development. And they are looking at developing, I believe it's 97 lots for single family residences. They've also uh, been talking to us about some mixed use and commercial development as well. There's kind of, we split that 60 acres in half and they wanted to work on the western portion first, which was single family residential. However, they've since come back in their due diligence and said, well, we're interested in the whole parcel. And so we're, re we're really looking at the possibility of working with them on taking down the entire 60 acres. And if we do so, that'll be a significant uh, development. I believe the last major residential development was probably at Kamazon post fire. And so uh, looking at the opportunity to have some new housing in the area is very important. We have a number of people that come up here to work in the day and then go back to uh, Santa Fe, the Valley, other places to, to reside. They, they bring their kids up and take them to school. We'd like them to also live here. And that will only help us reach our goal that was established many years ago of having 20,000 residents by 2020. Uh, we have to have some rooftops to be able to attract them. And also in the development world, uh, retail follows rooftops. So that if we want to enhance our retail opportunities locally, and I know many of the residents are looking for other opportunities, it's necessary for us to have retail to uh, capitalize on tourism. Uh, benefits you can't from a local government perspective we have to generate gross receipts taxes and you do that through retail op uh, opportunities so uh, pushing for new housing both infill as well as new opportunities is really important to that effort and I want to while we're here on this side I want to this group is chamber based and a lot of business related interests I want to introduce uh, Paul Andrus Paul if you just stand real quick Paul. <laughs> Paul was uh, instrumental in, in the conversation regarding A19 uh, that I just described, but also I want to point out um, there's been a lot of conversation about our permitting, our building department, and uh, everything related to uh, the business that the county does from a customer service perspective. Uh, we did have a resignation about three months ago, and the rent, you may have known, moved to Park City. And uh, just this week, or just last week, we went through interview for that position, it, uh, I'm recommending Paul as the new Community Development Department Director. And so it's going to be very important, your relationship with him, uh, especially in, in many of your own business interests. But I wanted to, I asked him to come here today to introduce him. I have to say, his appointment's contingent upon council approval, uh, which won't occur until the 26th of this month. But uh, I did want to have an opportunity to introduce him and please take some time to say hello to Paul, if not today, in the near future, because um, he was willing to step up to the challenge that we face with our community development department. And I appreciate that um, question, his sanity in some respects, but, um, <laughs> but we've had many conversations about it. He, is, he has been acting in that role for three months and he then uh, put his, his name in the hat for the position. So I appreciate that and I uh, want to welcome Paul to that new role. Another thing we do uh, is work with the schools very closely. There's a number of issues. Kurt was just talking about funding uh, concerns with respect to the school. The, the county has worked to uh, help the schools with funding directly uh, through offsetting some of their operational costs over time. Uh, basically, they've got some staff that are housed down to the county facility to do a lot of fleet 
issues. We have uh, some school resource officers, prevention specialists in the school that the county does uh, pay for their salaries. But there's also another program where the county has invested in capital uh, improvements to school district properties for the express purpose of increasing their lease revenue. And you may uh, recall, but back in, uh, don't exactly remember, but the sun's out, there's no snow on the ground. I think it was the summertime, roughly. Um, there was a grand opening of the, the canyon complex, the remodeled canyon complex, and uh, the county did contribute some $770,000 to that renovation. You can see several of the county uh, counselors are in this picture as part of that grand opening, just to recognize our participation in that. Uh, it's really good because in this investment, the school system then turns around and leases this property out uh, for revenue that helps in their operational uh, needs. So uh, we're hoping to enhance the schools in, in those opportunities when we can. There are certain legal issues that we can't cross the line, but this is one example of how we can actually um, assist the school in their, their needs. During this last year, we also opened some new facilities, uh, this being the, the golf course community building. Uh, new nice facility and we also happen to uh, arrange a lease with <coughs> local restaurateurs to operate a restaurant in that facility as well. Uh, this is something that was torn down many years ago, the community building, and there was a, a strong interest in getting a, a new facility out there as part of our capital improvement projects. This was just completed uh, early part of this past, of 2015. Also, many of you are probably familiar with, down in White Rock. Uh, this is the new White Rock Branch Library. And if you look to your left, there is the Youth Activity Center, where we have um, middle school and, and elementary age kids have the opportunity for after school care. Uh, both the, the library was constructed on the side of uh, Pinyon Park, and then the Activity Center had been there for years, but as part of that project, we remodeled uh, that facility completely and actually allowed uh, in part of the construction you can see between the two is a little amphitheater area a terraced space that allows for um, per, I don't know that we've had anything down there yet but is a neat space for uh, some presentations <clears throat> also in the foreground you can see the folded crane uh, sculpture I guess uh, which was recently installed and it, it's just amazing if you haven't had a chance to see it yet it's, it's a pretty unique feature obviously looks like an origami uh, crane but a neat new addition to the the area down there uh, as you drive down state route four you've seen quite a bit of change over the last four years everything from the new roadway itself to the, the streetscape the sidewalks our visitor center and now both the the library and the youth activity center have really enhanced the look and feel of white rock as, as people come through there it, it is a, a, a apparent that it's more apparent i guess that it's a community down there than it was in the past with all of the features that are on State Route 4. As part of that project, uh, our uh, Los Alamos um, leadership, is that the right name? Leadership Los Alamos. Leadership Los Alamos, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I knew I had all the words there. Uh, the graduates of the most recent class took on a project to install uh, some features down in the area between the two facilities and these are some neat musical features part features that you see outdoor musical um, instruments that kids of all ages can come play with so we appreciate our partnership with everybody there's a number of different uh, groups that have been involved in this process everybody from our White Rock Implementation Committee to uh, Leadership Los Alamos to our Youth Activity Center who is a contractor of the county um, as well as the, the folks involved in the construction it really was a a project that came together obviously our arts and public places with the new sculpture down there everybody's really worked to uh, enhance this project and I think it came out really well another new project <laughs> personal interest in the room but uh, <laughs> was the opening of the new nature center again a collaborative project between uh, the county and the Pajarito Environmental Educational Center uh, who is now the, the operator of the facility county owned but but we have a private operator and this I, I hope everybody's been into this facility it's a really neat new uh, place to be if you go in uh, one of my favorite things is the electronic trails app uh, cause, cause, and you can get it on your phone mm -hmm. <laughs> but be careful if you 
haven't downloaded the most recent version of Apple because uh, it'll prompt you to. Um, the other neat thing is that this facility won a couple of architectural design awards uh, very recently. And so it has put us on the map. It's been featured in several uh, Southwestern Architects magazines. Um, Governor came recently, did a New Mexico True presentation, kind of reporting out on uh, how that program's working at the facility. And it has garnished a lot of attention, uh, as well as uh, positive comments throughout. So uh, for our new Manhattan project and other park service activities, this is just one additional feature that obviously the local citizenry, but also um, members, come, people coming in from outside the community, we hope to direct them to that and extend their stay. I think it's also going to introduce them to the region, uh, give them a lot of information about uh, what they may not have come expecting, and that is the natural features here. When many people come, they know about the science and the history, but not necessarily our, our topography. And um, I, I really like that, that facility, and, and again, it's a, another one of the projects we completed in the last year. Science Fest, many partners here in the room, uh, county partners with LACDC to do uh, put on this event, and this year it was moved back from September to July. That really uh, enhanced the success of the event, had a significant increase in the number of people attending. Uh, it was also, uh, had some collaboration with our whole park um, introduction as well. There were a lot of neat things. Uh, I don't know who Dr. Who is there, but uh, he looks pretty intense. and. Uh, other activities that uh, went on during the days. It's just been a, a great partnership with LACDC and also an, another, you can see a little theme here with tourism, trying to bring people to the area. And here's a, a little neat program I wanted to highlight. There's a couple of them illustrated here, but um, in the middle picture, somewhat covered by the others, our chief, Dino Scambalone. Uh, he had a program that he conducted in his former community uh, Chief Scambalone moved here about two and a half years ago, but he brought with him a program known as Safety Camp. And we had a MOU with the school system this year and looking to continue it in the future where this program was put on during the last summer for younger kids. Uh, it has a variety of, of folks, as you can see, uh, involved them with the police department, put them through their paces in a few uh, related activities. But uh, one of the neat things they do is take young kids out on tricycles and put them run through cones, talk about traffic laws, uh, talk about stranger dangers, some other types of things, and just introduce them to the police officers so that there's not a uh, fear of our officers. Um, as well, the police department has been working on another number of public outreach from coffee to with cops. You can see here uh, Chief Scambalone's passing out candy on our uh, Main Street. Uh, there's another name here, <laughs> the Halloween event, um, trick-or-treat event. And then finally, down in the right corner, uh, we did receive a grant to support domestic violence awareness, and it actually supports a contractor uh, who will work with anyone affected by domestic violence. So there's some neat new outreach opportunities that have been occurring with our police department within the last year, hoping to extend those into future years as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Another um, quality of life issue, I think everybody in the community appreciates our trail system. And here's two examples, one of the more natural trails and then uh, our paved trail or our Canyon Rim uh, trail that runs down uh, beside 502. Been looking at opportunities to enhance these trails for people coming, some from the outside and some that live here, particularly looking at some new, we've installed some new wayfinding, so those, those, those translated as signs. Um, <coughs> along the trails so that uh, people can find the way. We have this spaghetti of trails in some areas and helping to um, allow people to know where to go on some of our backcountry trails. But also we're currently working on a project to extend um, the Canyon Rim Trail from, which now goes from um, basically down beside the co-op all the way up to uh, our fire station three. We're looking at the next segment of that. We've actually, when Smiths went in, uh, part of their requirements was to extend the trail along their property. And so we have a section of trail that goes from Connect to the Merck building, es essentially. But we're now trying to link up those two sections, and that will hopefully come this spring as we're looking to take the trail from behind Fire Station 
uh, three up to um, across the Arroyo towards DP Road and then back behind Smith's to tie in. So we'll have a trail going all the way from Connect down to the, the food co-op uh, once complete. We anticipate completing that this uh, next 12 months, ultimately with the goal of taking it all the way up to the uh, Omega Bridge area so that there's a corridor uh, off the street for walkers, bikers, people, strollers, whatever, uh, that can get between those areas. And uh, if you've ever been out to the, the paved trail, you see it's very well used. And so we want to enhance that feature going forward. Final quality of life issue is, is fun to have all these many uh, examples, and there's, there's others in the annual report, uh, is a, a new feature with respect to our transit. And there's a number of ways to access it. That's what a lot of this information talks about that's on the screen. But basically, you can, on your smartphone, uh, download from an app store an app that will tell you where the buses are. So if you're sitting, uh, at a bus stop and you're just anxious, you can pull up your phone and it'll tell you, oh, it's two blocks away and the little dot, flashing dot, slowly comes towards you so that you're ready uh, by the time the bus arrives. It, it, it's really neat. I know many people, um, if the weather's difficult, you know, want to hang out inside and be out at the bus stop right when the bus gets there. It's another way to do so. Uh, also, this information is linked with um, Google so that you can go online. If you've ever used Google Maps, uh, and pulled up, I want to go from Los Alamos to, I don't know, Charlotte, North Carolina. It'll show you how to drive there. Some, it'll show you how to fly there. And if you expand on that, uh, it'll start to show you, if you put in the, the right destination, it'll show you how to get from the airport to the hotel if you, you zoom in on it well enough. Well, this new program's integrated with it so that it'll show the travelers uh, that our bus system is both uh, available and also where that bus is, bus is so that somebody coming from, um, Char let's go the other direction, Charlotte to Los Alamos, they get in, into the airport, they can find out when the next bus is going to arrive, where the routes are, and uh, it's all within the Google side of things so that there's a, a single interface for folks. So looking to um, build upon what we would already have in place by uh, enhancing the technology side of things. Now, I go to, okay. The, the final area, we actually have two goals within this subset of thing. One of them was to simplify our permit process. I spoke about that jokingly a little bit earlier, but uh, we do see the need to uh, enhance understanding of our building permit process. And there's 10,000 perspectives on uh, obtaining a building permit, and there's many reasons that people have difficulties sometimes. Uh, however, we've introduced a new um, web-based system where individuals, homeowners, can actually track their permit. And so uh, part of the issue has been communications. We have a contractor come in and pull a permit and the homeowner hears, you know, how bad the county was from the contractor or hears that it was, uh, took two weeks to get the, the permit pulled when on our side we might, you know, sometimes, and this isn't every, our perspective is, well, the contractor just turned it in yesterday. Why are you so concerned about not having it uh, yet? There, there's some miscommunication sometimes. We're putting the, a new system together that one allows us to track it internally so that we can verify some of these um, complaints that we've been receiving. But the second part of it is, and this hasn't rolled out yet, we anticipate it will uh, within the next couple of months, uh, there's both an uh, internal portion of this tracking software as well as an external. And the external side is going to allow uh, the homeowner to get online or the contractor, submit for a permit, track its progress through our, our internal processes, and then also ultimately ask for inspections. So everything can be done online as opposed to having to even come into our office as we move forward. Uh, this is a pretty powerful program. It allows us to go in and see uh, where a permit is in the stage of its uh, approval process, what submissions have occurred, what may not have occurred, uh, as well as allow our own staff uh, to flag certain items as they, they need review. It's time for an inspection, a permit has been idle for a certain amount of time, uh, things like that will be all recognizable uh, and available to our, our staff now as opposed to digging through the files, the paper files that we've used in the past. The second goal under quality governance was uh, improving our communication process. 
And here you can see we've, we've performed a customer service week lately. And uh, past couple of years, we've had a, a day devoted to that where people can come into our community building and actually uh, ask questions, learn about it. We have a lot of displays out. Uh, but also there's been a, an active effort by some of our counselors to um, expand information that's provided to the citizenry. Uh, it's kind of hard, sometimes, sometimes we get participation, sometimes things get in the way, but we've had a couple of articles in the paper lately, we're promoting more interaction between our elected officials and the public. But also we have recently um, instituted on our website these same goals, taken in a different format for more explanation, and you'll see that off of our, our web page, uh, having taken these same goals you're seeing at the top and fleshing them out with the uh, description of the goal, what we're doing, what we plan to do in the future, as we're trying to, to allow uh, our citizenry to know more about what's going on at the county. Another part of quality governance is our staff. Uh, they are the ones who interface with our citizens, citizens who deliver services uh, and, and make everybody, hopefully, satisfied in the types of services we provide. So we've, we've instituted two um, internal training opportunities. One of them is known as our Los Alamos County Academy and this is for uh, new supervisors, some of which you're seeing uh, pictured here, so that we can instill in them some of the skills that they may not have been exposed to. They've come up through the ranks, now all of a sudden you're a supervisor, what do you do? <laughs> and how do you handle you know, taking one hat off from, from being one of the peers to now being a supervisor of those same people, uh, trying to provide our, our staff with um, the necessary skills and education on, on making that transition. We've conducted two of these so far. Initial one was for our director level staff just to make sure we knew what was being presented to our employees. We just conducted our first uh, training for our employees, put 25 of our, the employees through that. We're looking to do several of these each year. Uh, it's been a great thing internally because there's a, a great interest from our personnel in participating. Uh, it's also a good way that we're in, encouraging them to um, advance through our organization and this is one of those steps for them to do. Another related training, uh, again these are developed in-house and delivered in-house, has been a customer service training that has, was built from the ground up. Grassroots effort by our employees to define customer service, which customer service is different within each organization and we, we looked at some CAN programs but they didn't really fit local government interests. So instead we developed our own and we're rolling that out as we speak. Again, trying to um, enhance the services we provide to the community. I was trying to remember, but I think in the last year we, we hung a new artwork up in the, um, is that right, Julie, <laughs> in the last 12 months? I don't know if it, you recall, but in the uh, former community building, municipal building, uh, this tile picture was located in that, that facility. It was taken down and stored for the many years that we, were not, that it was, uh, we weren't in a facility. Then we reinstalled it in the council chambers this past year, but added, and the, we're able to contact the original artist, came back out, and because the space was so much bigger, he designed uh, two additional tile uh, displays to make a, a, a larger picture. It's, it's within council now, but that's just a, an aside. The purpose here is to, sh uh, with respect to quality governance, uh, we're really trying to allow for, again, enhancing that communication. We are streaming our meetings. They are on PAC-8, and KRSN does our, our White Rock meetings. And most recently, we have um, taken the, you can see a couple cameras that were installed in our council chambers for the streaming and, and broadcast purposes. Uh, we were requested to enhance that uh, work session that we conduct down in White Rock by having video in addition to the, the audio coming across the radio. So we've actually installed a single camera down there that we're going to be uh, streaming our meetings in addition to the radio broadcast uh, moving forward for our White Rock um, work sessions as well as our regular council meetings. And then finally, I, this could have gone a lot of different places, but our teen center op grand opening was a great addition to the community. Again, a partnership this, uh, with local groups, particularly the Y in this situation. Uh, but we had a number of different partners and, and we have a number, JJAB and others uh, do some programs within the, the facility. Uh, we did have the grand opening of the Teen Center this fall. And uh, it, it's been just a great 
success for those uh, kids that are there, especially we've heard positive reports from the, the location as well as the facilities themselves. Uh, we took the old community building where the council used to operate uh, their meetings, gutted the entire building, and if you walk in there today, you'll see some really interesting features that uh, I think the, the younger generation appreciates because it's uh, a different type of uh, interior architecture, exposed ceilings with some grid works. They've got a great snack bar in there, some different treatments on the walls, a music room for them to practice. Uh, there's just a number of different opportunities for our youth now uh, in this teen center, not to mention its central location was desired by the the kids because they wanted to be downtown. They didn't want to be off in the corner. And I think it's actually enhanced uh, some of the surrounding businesses as well because we have more people in the area. Um, Starbucks, Ruby K's, and others are, are appreciating some of the, the presence of additional people there because they're um, going in and, and purchasing food and beverages. This is always fun. I don't, we, there are, and, and you'll see in the annual report, we get all sorts of um, accolades throughout the year. And uh, you know, I was looking at just trying to list some of them up there. And there are actually some others we've received during the last year. But each year we tend to get a few. This is, I think, very representative of the community, of the efforts that the county and other local um, groups have made to enhance our community. <coughs> uh, talk, talk about quality of life. These really speak to that. I think the one that we need to, to work on is right there. We're only number two. <laughs> um, so. For those singles in the room, you know, you gotta, you gotta start reading more, I guess. I don't know what the, why, why we ended up there, but um, <laughs> it, it's just amazing for any organization to be able to uh, showcase a list like this. And I think this, again, really is, it speaks well of the community. Looking forward a little bit, and I'm gonna wrap up. I know if you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to try to answer them, but um, we've got a couple things going on. Every year we elect new council leadership. We now have a new chair, uh, Rick Reese, chair of the county council, and vice chair is Susan O'Leary. Um, I think one of the pressing issues is going, we're all gonna face is the recent news about the lab management structure and how that might look in the near future. I think there's a lot of angst over it, maybe a little premature time-wise because there's some time to elapse, but we gotta be thinking about the structure of the lab as it moves forward. Certainly, whether it's profit or nonprofit affects my job directly. Um, but I think it's going to create the turnover, if nothing else, will create a little concern within the community. And we need to, to figure out and communicate to everybody what's happening going forward. Obviously, as the elephant in the room, it's going to affect uh, many businesses in town. Uh, I mentioned a strategic planning retreat, which will occur a week from Saturday. That's when the council is going to establish their goals for the next year. Uh, I introduced Paul as our new CDD director. We're also going through a process of our capital improvement plan, and we have scheduled seven different meetings. We just had the first one Tuesday night, where the council is looking to uh, further invest. You saw a lot of new facilities uh, in the slideshow. They have some money set aside to develop some new amenities for the community, and those have been looked at from the point of view of quality of life, recreation, as well as economic development type of issues. The council ultimately is looking to vote on March 1st on how they intend to proceed. That is, what projects are they gonna pursue? But in the run up to that meeting, we're hosting seven different uh, CIP, Capital Improvement Plan meetings, trying to, they're actually known as listening sessions. The purpose is that we wanna hear from the community as to what they desire, and then ultimately that information will come back on March 1st for a decision. So if you look on our website, I'm sorry I don't have them listed here, we do have a, a schedule of those meetings and I'd ask it, if you have an interest, please attend. Uh, council certainly wants to hear your voice. State legislature opens next week. That's gonna be an important aspect of our efforts as we, we look to um, make sure that uh, we're in a position to benefit in the future. Primarily, some of the things we're asking of the legislature is uh, capital funding to assist us in connecting our uh, fiber infrastructure. That has been a, an issue as we've tried to get what is known as the middle mile. We have local infrastructure. There's a backbone in the valley, but we have a, about a mile and a half where we don't have any connection across a couple of different Pueblos, Forest Service land, and we're looking at a way to connect that. We're also asking them to uh, alter the State Local Economic Development Act. And in doing so, allow communities under 25,000 persons uh, to invest or incentivize retail operations. That's excluded from local economic development today. 
And it's very important for us in Los Alamos to uh, incentivize retail. It may not be as, as much of an issue for some other communities, but if you think about the lab generates high salary jobs. Our leakage ratio is over 70%, leakage being the money that is spent outside of the community for goods and services. We need to have the ability for people to spend their money here in retail operations, both so the community has an opportunity to uh, obtain those goods and services, but also so that it takes that great benefit we have here of the lab and their salaries, but we realize the benefit of that money being spent locally because if it's earned here but spent in Santa Fe, Locally, we don't see the churn. We don't see the um, multiplier effect from monies here as well as we don't get the tax revenue. So uh, we're asking the legislature to alter the LIDA Act to allow for us to spend some of our monies to incentivize retailers to come to the area. And that also builds upon the whole tourism effort because without the retail opportunities, the tourists are gonna come in, they'll see the, the sites, whatever they are, and they'll leave and we don't get the benefit other than the fact that there were more people walking around town. We don't see the economic benefit of those activities without retail. Going to be looking at a new web page within the next 12 months. I uh, mentioned that just because it is our uh, primary point of interface with the community. Uh, and, and associated with that, we've started our efforts at a new economic development web page. And this is the last subject I'll talk about today. Uh, it is not yet here, I've got a couple of uh, preliminary pages, but this is gonna be a neat tool for people looking to uh, find out information about the community because, and here's a couple of, um, this is very preliminary. You can see we're, we're trying to use our new logo, um, but also if you look across the top, there's a couple of different things you might be able to link to from this site, um, including some mapping functions which when you zoom in, and again, this wasn't fully functional yet, we'll go down to uh, certain properties that the county has for sale, location of businesses that, that want to participate with us, anything that can be pulled off of uh, available information. This is a neat interface that allows us to distribute that information. Also, it's going to have the ability for people to come in and from a demographic perspective, um, not just know that there's 18,000 people living here, but break down, you can see from age, distribution, race, this is the type of stuff that's buried in the Bureau of Economic Statistics website. We're just looking for a better way to provide it uh, to the public, uh, including some graphical representations of that as well. And this, this is just a very short snapshot of some neat things that we hope to um, build upon. This will be rolled out, probably fully functional by the beginning of March <coughs> or so, but I want to give you a little heads up because I think this could be an important tool for local businesses as well as our efforts to attract uh, others to the community. Finally, I appreciate your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to field them, but if you need to leave, I understand as well. So, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. There's definitely, um, it's been reduced. I don't know, have you done, have we done a follow-up to compare the before and after, Greg? The, the Smith's, Smith's uh, impact it, on it, leakage? It, as far as leakage, it looks like uh, on the average, we've seen about a 20% increase in retail sales over the last five years, and most of that is in, in Smith's. So uh, we were about half the sales per capita uh, of Santa Fe about five years ago, and now we're somewhat less. But still, as Harry mentioned, 75% of our retail leaks out of also, 75% of labs purchases leaks out as well, so um, it, a couple things to work on. It, it's not defined at that level to where we can get all the information, so we have to kind of guess based upon the increase in uh, gross receipts that we've seen as well as some of the other factors, but uh, definitely they, they went beyond their targets, and uh, in, in just personal conversations, I know many of our employees from the county uh, who actually live outside the community, many of them stop at Smith's before they go home because they prefer the new uh, facility to some of their opportunities in their hometowns. Um, and anecdotal as it is, I, I found that very encouraging. Anyone else? Sure. Um, in the last session of the county council, they presented the community health profile. Yes. Um, and I know that they're supposed to come back 
back at the end of this month, I think, with some recommendations on how to move forward and some action items based on the recommendations. Correct. Can you talk a little bit more about, I mean, I don't know what the funding stream for that might look like or what the path forward with that is, but it wasn't on the current issues, so I'm curious where that stands with you all. There, there were other things that I didn't yeah, touch on. Like, so, no. Um, no, that's fair. In fact, on the 26th, we're going to have a follow-up to the conversation uh, as presented by Kim Gabaldon, our um, social services manager. And there were some specific questions council asked out of the a prior pr presentation um, that she's supposed to be bringing information back. I don't anticipate action on those specific issues at the 26th, however. The whole focus right now in lining it up is we're looking towards April, which is our budget season. And about two, actually three years ago, we established this whole social services division. And so we're looking at trying to get the information in front of council so that they determine where we want to spend our money, and that is any additional programs um, or different direction that they want to provide to the social services program will come out of our uh, budget pr uh, procedures. So right now it's an information stage. I expect the decisions and uh, us to know a little bit more about the direction through our budget process, which will be April. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I guess I answered all the questions. That's good to hear. <laughs> thank you for your attention. Um, Y'all have a good day. I, I appreciate your time this morning.